the camera can't see it, but it's a freaking blizzard out here. We're already back in West Bend, just past the high school. Um, I'm not going to talk about the game because I am too pissed about it, especially the ending, that I just don't feel like it's appropriate for me to speak into the camera. Uh, the people who are there would understand, hopefully. I know one of my teammates who are with me going through the same thing I was doing would understand the most. Well, months later, three months later after the biggest blow I think I've ever seen in my career, it still pisses me off. Like, I, something you just can't let go of you witness. I mean, I know these clips, like, you can see it online and stuff, but I just don't feel appropriate putting the video. I mean, to me, like, without being the team player much as I can say, I just can't say names, but people who were there knows what happened. And there's two main people I'm really pissed at, but I can't tell you guys who, but it's just something. I mean, you saw in a few videos that, you know, I probably said some mean things after games and uploaded the YouTube, but this one, if you watch like the Waukesha video, it was kind of like that, but this one was way worse, dude. So we were up to nothing, going on a power play with like five minutes left in the game or whatever. And of course, everyone knows how good I can be producing offense and stuff like that. I think that's probably the, I think I feel like I'm one of the best for producing on offense on our team. But, you know, of course, I felt short shifted that game for no reason. You know, he he's played with me on the third rotation line and some other guy named Quinn goes to Germantown, but you know, all three of us never got university school's offense rolling one time at all. We were doing our jobs pretty much perfectly. We were shutting them down as much as we can, you know. Sometimes I just wish offense could produce more in their opportunities and get the boys buzzing more, but the biggest choke after, so what happened at that five minute mark was probably the biggest mistake I ever seen by a defenseman. I mean, ever. I mean, no one was in him like 20 feet around him. He's trying, he's at our own blue line. He whiffs looks for it, sucking his feet, tries to get out of there. And it's taken like seconds, like three to five seconds, which is a lot of time in hockey, like a lot. And a guy from USM just picks it off and gets an easy short hand goal. It's like, oh boys, it's 2-1, it's a little less than five minutes now. We're still on the power play, so hopefully we can get going, right? And the guy who made the mistake, I just saw him on the bench with his head down, I was like, I really wanted to say something, but I just, I couldn't right now. I need to go. So, with that, a minute later or whatever, power play's over with. And he's, the guy who made that mistake is back out there without us getting a shot for no odd reason. And that's what I was really pissed about, the defensive coordinator of that game, like defensive coach. I. I want to put a lot of blame on the game on him because I feel like he really let that happen. But, you know, I still appreciate him. You know, we're bros. I'm not saying I'm like, I hate him for that. I'm going to keep chewing him out or whatever, but that one just really bugged me on that. But, so same kind of same thing happens as a one-on-one, -on -one, easy one-on-one. -on -one. The guy's not even that fast. He's out here taking a stick towards the boards. He jumps way up, turns his hips completely the other way. The guy goes right by him. And easy goal. Like, not even a single finger is laid on him or anything. No physicality, nothing. No good technique, none of that. And we're tired, I was like, oh my God. Put me out there. But no, they didn't put us out back. So the guy, the best, the best defensive, I think I'm the best JV player defenseman in the state. 
I mean, besides my teammates, you know, we're really good. But without them, I, I feel like I'm the best defensive player in the state for JV. You know, it's a, something I really shouldn't say, but I, I felt like that, you know? I felt like these guys, there weren't no threat to me. Another minute goes by, like, less than a minute ago, like, at 50 some seconds. Two forwards absolutely missed and chased it. The guy walks in, easy goal. I was like, and they just took the lead. So three goals, boom, 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 right at that, and we lose the game to a game that means so much to me, and probably him frustrates him even more, and the other guy named Quinn. But, you know, university school, how rich they are, how long of a history I had. You know, it's just that one team you just couldn't get over. Like, you wanted to beat them so bad because something about rich schools, I just really want to beat. And I, we didn't play in my sophomore year, you know, I really wanted to. And having some guy who just, you had it, the game right there, and the game means so much to you. Like, this is probably least, my least favorite team I, in the state, and I really wanted to beat him so bad. And just see him do that to me, without me out getting an opportunity to do the things I know I'm capable of doing, it just, it really pissed me off. I mean, oh my God. I mean, me and Ferrier that entire game before that last five minutes, we had a positive plus minus, zero goals we're getting in, looked like a good semifinal game for us. And then it's just really tough to watch it slip by, you know, I mean. The thing about it was, this has happened multiple times in, this, in the season. Maybe not ending up in a loss is mainly ties, which ties to me are like losses. I hate losing more than I even love winning, and there's a difference of that. But, you know, the thing that keeps constantly happening, and I feel like coach is not understanding what we're trying to say or what we're doing at all, but having something like that, like, it happened, what, a week before, and then it, it got even worse now. It was, uh, yeah, just tough to watch it slip by and uh, have your coaches yell. I mean, they barely yell, but that game, Coach Dan was off off yelling, and I don't blame him, you know? And, and to me, I probably took that the most harsh, because that was, that game pissed me off so much. I, I, it was so hard for me to drive home and cal get me calmed down. But with me and Rao, and me and Quinn, we have not gave up like a single goal this season. Maybe like one, maybe even two. But the other times it did happen, it was not even our fault really. It was probably like a forward doing something bad. Three minute shift, the forwards. You know, like, or they even have their stick up and they're just turning, constant turn turnovers or whatever, not helping out. Or even the goalie just having a really bad day. You know, for us, we've been like perfect this season. I mean, I know what he's capable of doing. He knows what I'm capable of doing. We work it out together and we perfect together. And I think that's the big reason why the third line rotation is probably the most powerful out there. Because we know what we're doing, because we're efficient in what we do together. Yep. We were consistent, we'd go on, do our job, and then honestly it seemed like I was pretty much, for me, I, I, I was kind of tired. I was like, oh, this, this game's in the books. Play finals tomorrow. It's frustrating to watch it slip and you just wish you could go out there and do your thing. We couldn't do a single thing. They wouldn't let us. I don't know why we've never been playing out there again. I don't know why coach just doesn't see certain things we do because we know how to win games. We know what's most efficient for this team to do, produce most out there. And just the fact that we weren't even on the same page really since the beginning of the season, it just really got to me. But you know, with that being said, I still had to try to move on, get the next game going, which we easily won. You know, but it's the team that played in the championship game was Greendale, which if you haven't seen, it's in this vlog right here. And we beat them pretty good. I mean, just think about it, we would have been the champions. We would have. And for them, knowing what we've been, what Greendale's and what we've done in the past years, they think they're champions, but secretly, 
they know that we were the champions because they know we weren't in it. They know who's the better team. I hope it is day two of the tournament. Well, we are here. Concordia. So I'm guessing we're just in that one, but I, we can't use those doors. Are you recording this? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, look, I'm here with my boy Talon. He's looking no. extra handsome today. No. <laughs> <laughs> extra thick. Game boys, I got your fair. Uh, Farrier had the sexiest goal of the night. I don't know if it's on YouTube. Yep. I did pass it to him, and he scored it. Top shelf, right bar down. It was fucking beauty. Yes, sir. Subscribe to the channel because that shot was so hot. <laughs> well, driving back from Ozaki Ice Center. Uh, it's nice coming after a victory. You know that game yesterday still gets in my head. Wish I got a goal though, but dude, if you were there, it's the sexiest goal you'll probably ever see.